kind dudes and whatnot. Uh huh. What? What? How do I ask? Okay, give me like some of the name names of some of the equipment they're using. Well, they got this one room. Okay. And they had the, the the guys that did like the. Uh, what, what are they called? Because uh, you know it's got several recording rooms in it. But okay. The, it was the guys who did like the Imagine Dragons, and they've done other people, and they have like these giant tablets, right? Tablets? Yeah, they're they're touch screen, huge, like uh, I think they're called. Oh, uh, you're talking. Well, you're talking like a D command. Yeah, I mean, they, that, they got some right. stuff. Or it's but, actually what it does is it's practically like a a digital representation of an analog strip, like a yeah. an SSL, which would start with your you know buses, then your you know. Um, your inputs, your gate, your filters, your EQ, and compressor, so on, right? Yeah, yeah, I think what they call it, it's not tablet, it's, um... Scrablet. Well, there was an, I was telling a guy about it, and he's like, oh yeah, those things are cool. But, um, because I didn't know what they were, I just saw them, you know, because I took a tour. Yeah, so they're using like a Pro Tools or yeah, uh, they new Wendo, huh? giant touch screen things, you know, where they can control everything. Yeah, that's like a D command. Like you yeah, look up a Z command. It's it's pretty much those are the old school version of it, but it's practically what it is. There's several of them, you know, in that nature, but it practically all it is is really. It, what they did is they actually took um, like an SSL and you know more or less recreated it in the digital concept where it still has the you know the signal flow and whatnot. Here's the thing, though, Jesse, you can have that's that's just to, to control uh, what you're doing as far as in in the recording session, but. Like if you actually look look at their look at their like uh, preamps and uh, amplifiers and all, and and the collection of microphones, you know transducers. Yeah. If you, that's where it matters because essentially all you're really doing is you're storing the media in a digital format. But how you actually capture that that uh, you know the the the, the uh, the media or whatever it is, uh, um, uh, the tracking, really, uh, in most of these really good studios, they'll have an excellent, excellent um, combination of different kind of microphones. And Yeah, uh, they, they got all that. Like, I went in there for a tour. I was telling Matt about it. Yeah. And there was some... <laughs> well, the thing the thing is, is what I'm saying, Jesse, is all I'm really saying is this. You can have the same fucking thing at home. All you really need is good microphones, good preamps, and how you actually capture that doesn't really matter. Um... Well, it does, because you obviously want to record it in digital format at like, you know, at least 24-bit, 96K, or even better at 192, which represents the analog um, representation of the signal itself, which is, starts with a microphone, or even like, um, even if you, you know, like, let's say you play a bass, you can either... Uh, mic the bass, or you can like do a DI. I don't know if you ever heard of that, Jesse. No, is he there? No. 
There he is. <laughs> Hang on. Hello? Hi, hello? Hello? I'm not sure. Yeah, something happened there. Weird. But essentially, all I was really saying, Jesse, it, 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 you can have the same thing. You don't even really, uh, I mean, yeah, studio, cool to use their gear, but how much are they talking? Oh, like 15, 15 grand for like... A okay, so let me tell you something right now, Jesse. For 15 grand, I can tell you exactly what to buy as far as um, uh, what major albums... I would say in LA or in Hollywood that, and I'm talking about all the, uh, how to put it to you, the, the, the selection of microphones that are used practically religiously on every album. And, and there's a reason for that. And I mean, we can, I can have a conversation about transducers for a couple hours just to kind of give you a different flavor of why they chose certain microphones for certain things. And I, I mean, and, and Matt can actually attest to that because I mean, oh, yeah. um, um, because they're, okay, I'll give you an example, for instance. Okay, like an SM58, right? It's a sure microphone, it's a dynamic, uh, uh, large, large uh, it's a dynamic, large diaphragm, analog uh which doesn't need any phantom power 48 volts or anything like that it's just a straight up analog microphone it's a fucking workhorse that microphone is used from a to z but a lot of people use it for uh to mic a lot of different things but they do mic um um I mean, you name it, Matt. What do you think? I mean, from the SM58, we used it, I mean... Oh, fucking for goddamn, like, a, a, well, drums, ambient, yeah, percussion. Um, percussion. You could use it for vocals. backing vocals, kind of, uh, for sure. Um, we used it on drums for, um, for the... Uh, I mean, we, you, you just, it, it's a workhorse. It's a, like a oh, yeah. standard workhorse. That they just throw it in there. And, and the point of that is is because it has a um, um, very uh, high SPL. I think I think it, it, it can go up to like 135, yeah. 140, yeah. which, I mean, you can literally beat the shit out of that microphone and you can't kill it. But, um, uh, you know, or S SM uh, 57B, that, okay, that's just an example. Here's another one, like a D112, which so many, so many damn albums are recorded with that microphone, especially the drum kick. Yeah. The way it's utilized just because of the frequency response of it, you know, as far as from the uh, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. It's just the, the, the more or less the way the um, uh, frequencies uh, represent themselves at a certain um, it usually like every microphone will have its bump that's what they call it and so like uh, give you an example for instance like a um, uh, like an AKG 4, 412A or 412B right the, that microphone is such a beautiful microphone because they use it for like a stereo. You can usually buy them in a stereo, like overheads on drums, religiously used for that. Um, or for, uh, for instance, you get uh, a lot of people use that uh, 412 AKGs because, uh, for like a, uh, a saxophone or a horn or uh, backup vocals like or room tone and I mean there's just so many different things with it but um, that's another or like a um, 
um, Sony C1, uh, Sony C112 or C115, for instance, which was widely used for like uh, snare recording, just on a drum itself, because it it, it had such a nice, beautiful um, the frequency response of that microphone tended to be between like uh, 8K to about 15K. Yeah. SM, SM50, SM, SM57 is nice uh, for the snare also. Oh yeah, SM57, same thing. Snare. Nice, and, nice yeah. and crisp. Very very, oh, di- very nice direct crisp. signal like it, that. Just pinpointed. This, yeah, it has a really beautiful response between like 800 hertz to about 5K, yeah. which has that really nice snap too yeah. it, 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 you know so it's the same thing like you know like um, um, you know people use uh, different different microphones just based on the flat frequency response for vocals if you had a thin voice you would want to have a um, like a large diaphragm microphone that would actually have a bump in the range of like the 400 to a 1k you know uh. and if you really had a really boomy voice that's when you would kind of stay away from those microphones that would actually throw even more of the low end to your voice which you already had you don't need it so you kind of you know you want to go for the mid-range uh, balance but the point, yeah so the point i'm making jesse is for 15 grand Dude, you can set up a fucking studio like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I was thinking too. It's like, yeah, man, man. It's, no, it's really not man. a lot for school, but at the same time, if I was to spend that on like guitars and drums and microphones, yeah, and shit, dude, imagine if you just put, yeah, stuff, you know? yeah, if you if you directed that towards the uh, gear to fucking set up a nice little recording situation, yeah, you could do pretty well. Yeah. Here, check this out. The, the, the point I was making from the get-go is this, that for roughly six to seven grand, you can have a really kick-ass, you know, and let's say you have a laptop that does like uh, Thunderbolt style, right? And majority of the computers now, usually you can put up to 32 gigs of RAM, which is plenty enough to run a session through a Thunderbolt, and then you can get a get, you know, you can get a, um, or even even if you don't have a Thunderbolt, you can go so many different. You have there's so many different options. The point really is is to get a really good recording. It starts starts with like a, you know, like a really good um, eight channel preamp that you know has a, you know, uh, pretty good, you know, like distortion ratio and all that stuff that's what it comes into place you know of the good preamp what what are what is the distortion ratio and more or less uh how is it actually okay give you an example like a manly for instance right a manly a two channel manly will cost you like fucking three grand but these are beautiful fucking preamps. Am I saying you need to go out there and get fucking manlies? No, all I'm saying is that there is equipment out there that you can get a really decent, or for instance, like the, the, uh, the 882s and the, uh, the, the 192 uh, preamps that Pro Tools even has. You know, they, they have... Uh, various lines of them that you can actually do a you can buy like a 192 io or even a i mean all i'm saying is you can set up a really good good um uh recording um studio for the money you're going to spend at that fucking school yeah that's it. Now, I mean, if, if, if you really want, like, you know, if you, if you really want, like, uh, um, you know, advice, 
I'm here, dude. 